live just as our chief has dialed in. Hey, John. Great to have you there. A perfect, impeccable timing, of course. What is it? Be there or be late or be never? I can't remember what the phrase is now, but <laughs> I'll, get it, I'll get it eventually. I'll get it eventually. So I'm going to mute everybody um, just so that we can all hear what's going on. Um, and then we will pile in. So welcome, everybody. We're live on the John Lavinia Success Mastermind general session. And today's topic is broadly summarized by Just Do It. And who's on Zoom today? We've been saying hello to a lot of people dialing in. Cyril's there, Nikki, John, of course, Therese, Mark, Kuila. Too many names to mention. The, 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 the screen's filling up as I speak. But all the usual suspects, as I'll call you, are here. Lovely to see everybody and really hoping to share some thoughts today because I think we're on the verge of a big year. And as John has been reminding us, um, it's a big year for the taking and we've got to do something about it. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, Last time I spoke a couple of weeks ago, we talked about acting now and living our dreams and went through that thought process. And this time I actually wanted to talk about taking decisions and what we can do to trigger taking action, because I think that's the danger that we just don't do anything. 2021 is within our grasp right now, right here. And as I just said, it's there for the taking. And I really, really do believe that. And John is desperately trying to encourage us all to think that way rather than just sink into a um, a sort of vague thought process. Um, I walked the dog on the beach on Saturday and while I was standing there in beautiful water looking out at the horizon, I really did think a lot about this group and what 2021 meant for us all and what it could bring us all. Because everyone in the, on this call right now and everyone that's not on the call in the group, we all want the best for every single member of this family and I'm absolutely convinced of that. And of course, John shook us up on Friday night, as I mentioned yesterday in the Be Heard session, uh, and prompted us to take action again yesterday with a life plan and ran through that process. And as you know, John is a, a brain box and likes to throw in stimulating thoughts to get our creative juices flowing. He has a habit of doing that when we're least expecting it. He'll lob something into the debate. And on, on Friday, he challenged us to think about real business possibilities for 2021. What could we actually sell? What's happening? Where's the stock? What are people selling? What are they going to want? What are they going to be selling? And he did that because he really wants, as he put it, big wins for everyone in this group. He doesn't want anyone left out. I'm still mulling over in my head what he said on Friday. It was definitely seismic, John. It was definitely a seismic call. And we've got to do another one like that because it was so practical and so focused on why and why not and what will work and what won't. But after that call, uh, funnily enough, before John spoke yesterday, because we really don't coordinate these talks uh, in the strict sense, uh, so I'm happy to be following on in a, in a theme with John today, but after Friday night, I'd already set down what I was gonna say and thought about really what's stopping us most in achieving these big wins that John is talking about. And it, it struck me more than ever that what 2021 is going to bring for each one of you and, each, and me and each one of us is going to be determined mainly by our decisions, our individual supporting actions. It really, really is down to us. Yes, you can get support and the mastermind is a fantastic support, but it is down to us individually to generate decisions and take action at the end of the day. Now, two weeks ago, as I said, I spoke about living the dream, living our dream, our personal dream and the need for action and I actually made a call to action in what then was week 47 of the calendar. We've crept on a bit since then. So it's becoming even more imminent that action is going to be required for 2021. And I really wanted to focus today on what we can do about taking action and how we can actually enter 2021 supercharged and ready for decisive progress. So what's step one? Well, I think that the, 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 the biggest failure and the step one that's always required is taking a decision. And that really sounds obvious, I know, but you know, we can contemplate, we can dream, we can think. That's a great part of the creative and inventive process. Think and Grow Rich, which we've studied extensively, really focuses on, on the power of those dreams, etc. cetera. But you know, they're crucial, but there comes a point when we have to take a decision. We've got to get off the fence. And we've got to ask ourselves, look, uh, are we suffering from decision paralysis? What's stopping us making a decision if we haven't made one? Um, have we made a decision, but a decision which is so vague 
that we can't actually act upon it in a decisive and consistent way because it has to be decisive and clear and then it has to be consistently backed up. So all of those problems, if we fall into those three traps, they're guaranteed to stop us in our tracks. And the most important of all being not arriving at a decision in the first place. We haven't got a chance if we can't arrive at a decision about what to do. So I thought we should all really look at our current status and plans and recheck that we've taken all the decisions we need to take. And that's what I'm going to force myself to do. Um, John challenged me yesterday by saying, you know, think, or I think it was yesterday, think what you could actually do with 2021 if you got the tires on the road and got on with it. Um, you know, we, we really need to say, look, if we're, if we're not making decisions, why not? Um, what are the key factors involved? And I wanted to go back to a strategy that I mentioned in previous calls, which is called the Six Thinking Hats. It's a very famous uh, book and, and method which was developed by Edward de Bono. So de Bono, D-E, and then Bono, B-O-N-O. He's been writing thinking and logic books for decades, and he came up with this technique called the Six Thinking Hats, which we're going to go into. We all suffer really from decision bias, and this has just come up in the calls as well. In other words, we tend towards a certain natural personal viewpoint before we make the decision, which has already colored the decision we're going to make. The danger is we simply focus on the factors that reinforce that pre-existing bias. And then of course, you could arrive at a bad decision. So rather than standing back and saying, wait a minute, let's take a, take a fresh and dispassionate look at the evidence and the factors that are actually involved in this current decision with a neutral pair of eyes, a fresh pair of eyes. And that is where the six thinking hats comes in. Uh, it forces you to step back from your automatic knee jerk uh, approach to taking a decision you, you're thinking about. Uh, in the six thinking hats book, De Bono describes the idea as being to force ourselves and other, any other person in a debate or decision making process to properly consider alternative viewpoints and factors in order to make a fully rounded and properly considered decision. So basically he's asking you to adopt the various different stances and to argue each of them in order to analyze each perspective and open our minds to each perspective and test it. Um, there's a, there's a well-known BBC sports quiz. Some of you might've seen in, in the UK on radio five live called fighting talk. And, the contestants have to argue in favor of a diametrically opposed and controversial opinion on a particular sports topic they're given with hilarious results, but it makes them take the opposite view to the one they actually hold, which, which is what we're doing here to force yourself into an analytical position. And it really works because the brain has to look at the whys and wherefores of the whole topic on both sides of a debate. And this is great in meetings. It was designed for meetings, but it's equally valid in, your, in our own heads, making ourselves analyze everything that's going on and looking at all the angles and looking in all directions, not looking in one direction, like a compass pointing north and not turning east, west or south. So how does it work? Uh, well, the six, it, it's a massive topic. So I can only really summarize today uh, what's involved. And you know, I'd encourage everyone to read it if you get the chance. The six hats are all colored. And in a metaphorical sense, you're, you're asked to don each hat, discuss the decision or the issue under that viewpoint for that hat, um, and then move on to the next one. And this is called parallel thinking. In other words, you lay all the views down in parallel at that point. Later on, you determine if you need to, whether you've got to choose between two views, but you don't always need to. You've laid down all the information, all the viewpoints in parallel, and sometimes the decision's already popped out and is clear, but sometimes you need to resolve a conflict between some of the information you've laid down. But the important thing at this point is laying it down and getting all the facts or all the viewpoints on the table. The author describes thinking as the ultimate human resource. And I'll put that one to John for later, see what he says about that. But the ultimate human resource is thinking. And he says it's crucial to making good decisions or to making any decisions at all. He also says that, and this is really thought provoking, poor thinkers believe that the purpose of thinking is to prove yourself right to your own satisfaction. Now, I certainly suffer from that. I think we all probably suffer from that at various points. Going in 
with a bias or a viewpoint, then looking for the evidence to back ourselves up and prove ourselves right, rather than challenging ourselves to say, am I doing the right thing? Have I got this right? And that really is a recipe for disaster, for indecision, or making bad decisions. Uh, but according to this parallel thinking method, we try not to reinforce our own biases and prove ourselves right by wearing each of the hats in turn during the decision-making process. So it's not about confrontation, which our whole Western system is based on in a way, debating something from one point of view and another and proving yourself or somebody else right or wrong. It's not about that. It's about coming up with the best way to progress and make a good decision. And each hat represents a different viewpoint or way of thinking. He gives us the example of four people standing in front of each face or facade of a house. Each one of them is looking at a different face of the house and describing what they're seeing and saying this is the correct view because they can't see the other sides of the house and they don't go round to look at the other sides of the house. They keep standing in front of the face of the house they're looking at. And that's the danger with what we do when we look at a problem. So these uh, six hats are as follows. And remember again, the idea is not that you like what's being said to you or what you're putting forward yourself. That's not the point. You just have to get down uh, and, and recall the direction of the, of the discussion. Just get down what comes up for you when you're wearing that hat and taking that viewpoint. Not about uh, whether, it, whether you like it or not, because you might not like some of what you write down. That's not the point. It's challenging you to think and just momentarily consider something else you may not have taken into account. So these hats briefly, and it, you know, it's a huge work which you need to read, but the, the blue hat is about control and organization of the process. You start off by laying down what it is you're thinking about, the agenda, you know, why am I doing it? What's the objective? What's the sequence of, of thinking I need to go through to get to a decision? And at the end, you come back with the blue hat again and work out what, what progress you've made and whether you've reached a decision or conclusion, what you have to do to do so. The white hat is neutral, color white being neutral, um, he is saying that is about just gathering facts, figures, all the information you need. Get the information, get that out, write it down. Everything you need to know factually about this decision. Then the red hat. What's the emotional viewpoint? What are your emotions and gut feelings and emotional views on, on the issue? Get those down. Then the black hat. Trying to prevent mistakes, looking at risks, dangers, and potential problems. Look at the negative side, get it down. The yellow is the positive hope and positive point side, get those down as well. And then finally the green hat is about new ideas and creativity. Think, think brand new, what could I do? What, 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 could, what could be different? What may I not have thought about before? So really let, let's, let's get thinking, you know, let, let's all use that and put the hats on because we need to make some decisions. As John said yesterday, let, let's just do it. We've got to decide. He, he also said, don't wait for perfection. If we wait for perfection, we'll never do anything. Uh, we just have to go in imperfect conditions and do the best we can and something will happen. If you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. Um, so if we've decided what to do, we've also got to take action. The decision is no good without implementation. And I also wanted to look at the factors that arise in identifying some of the, op uh, the options we might, we might take and the actions we might take. And I thought about 2020 in previous years and then I thought, well, what could we do for 2021? One thing I think we could do is to write down the 10 things that we would do or change in order to make 2021 a success for ourselves individually. And I'm suggesting we try and write them down and then personally brainstorm them to generate some actions you could take on those 10 things. Um, and I really hope perhaps we could generate a John Lavinia success mastermind personal 10 item priority action list. Here are my 10 things I'm going to address and, I'm going to do, and this is what I'm going to do about them. Um, maybe we could even put that next to our, our vision boards. Uh, some of the late, later joiners in the group may have not have been exposed to the vision board, but I recommend it. And there are lots of people in the group that can explain the vision board if you haven't come across it. John also has video links to the vision board process, which were very instructive. But I think if we all make a list, then we're going to gain maximum value from our journey in 2020 so far. And I really think we could propel ourselves forward to success in 2021. And I think we've really already picked up many tools that we can use in 2021, 
but we have to have a priority focus now if we're going to actually capitalize on those because otherwise we're not going to use them they're, they're, they're going to become diluted and wasted so the 10 item personal priority list that looked like a good starting point for me and i'm, I'm trying to do it i mean remembering again thomas edison genius is one percent inspiration and 99 percent perspiration there's a time just to stop thinking and, and get on with it and roll your sleeves up and no matter what the conditions are so without action, we're going to carry on living dreams. Um, John wants those big wins for us. We discussed that, as we said on Friday and again yesterday. If we want those big wins and John really wants to see those big wins, we've got to start producing. We've got to start acting. So I thought, well, OK, if, if I'm trying to write this list, perhaps as some fuel for the process, I could write down some typical questions that we might ask ourselves. And I searched the books and the tools that I have for, for ideas. There are a lot more questions, I'm sure. So let's throw them in when we open the floor. But the idea was really to create thoughts and real resulting actions in order to progress change to make 2021 a good year. I started off looking at um, those questions Thought, well, uh, one of them might be, what would you have told your younger self to do or not to do or to change? Another one might be, what advice would you give to a friend in your position or facing your decision? And these are all designed to generate thoughts for us, of course. But what are the most important things that you would tell any young person to do or not to do if you look back now at what you've learned? Have you allowed enough space in life for fun, pleasure and reflection? That's always an important question. Is there anyone in your circle that's dragging you down or holding you back currently? Do you have access to the right advice and support? That's another one for me. Do you have control of your budget or are there things you really do not need or that are actually being wasted right now? And this is all for use in 2021. Do you have all the knowledge you need for your current plans and needs? And if you don't, where, where could you get it? Are you pursuing the right type of business for you, for your personality and for the time you have available or you're prepared to make available? Are you actually excited about the work or the business that you're currently pursuing? Are there opportunities you know of that you're just not taking advantage of? You're, you're just letting them go past? And if so, why? Is there anything you know about that if you did it consistently really would change your life? And that's an important one for me. John mentioned the comfort zone yesterday. This really is the destroyer of dreams for me, of, of decisions and actions. I really mean that. I mean, comfort kills. And I think that, that should be a health warning on every packet. The comfort zone is a bad place to be. You've got to challenge yourself. What could we do to take ourselves out of our comfort zone next year? And then are you clear on your personal values and beliefs and on your personal mission? And how, how, how do you define yourself? How do we define ourselves? Are we clear on that? Is there anything we could do, we could identify that's actually really holding us back or, or, or a problem that needs solving, a, a, a big problem that needs solving? Are we doing enough to expand our personal network? Uh, and listen to Glenn on that. He talks all the time on Wednesday nights about networking. It's crucial to selling and building a business. Have we put the right habits in place and are we actually enforcing them consistently? Are there any alternatives to what we're doing now that we haven't considered? How would uh, an outsider describe your current position and your opportunities if, if he looked at them right now? Would they say you were lucky and gosh, you should be doing this? And lastly, if there are things we know now that we should change now, how are we going to feel if we don't do it in 10 minutes? How are we going to feel in 10 months? How are we going to feel looking back in 10 years? Are we going to have regrets? Are we going to say, gosh, I could have done that? That's a really heavy one. It crashed through my floor when I thought about it, I could tell you. The reverse of that is, um, will what we're considering right now matter in 10 months or 10 years? Perhaps we're considering the wrong things. So from all of these things and all the other questions I know you've, you've probably all got, which I'd love to hear, um, we can generate, I think, a 10-point priority action plan for 2021. Let's do something real. Let's pin it down to real actions to change the answers to those questions to get ahead. Um, I really think we can do that. And remember again, think and grow rich. Knowledge is potential power, he tells us. It's no good if we don't turn it into actionable steps for 2021. Having all the knowledge sitting on our desks is great, but we have to use it. So if we take these questions away 
and create actions. And it's just small steps every day. That'll do it. Small step. Don't try and do it all in one week. We, every day taking small steps on that plan, I am sure will get us there. I'm going to open up shortly, but I, I first wanted to mention if we needed any more inspiration uh, right now, after listening to John, et cetera, in the last few days, I wanted to leave you with a story of an athlete called Chris Nitschik who entered the Guinness Book of Records this November, a few days ago, after becoming the first person with Down syndrome to complete an Ironman triathlon. Now that is really heavy duty. He did a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike ride, and a 26.2 mile marathon run, which nobody's ever done before with, with his condition. He posted on Instagram, Ironman goal set and achieved. Time to set a new and bigger goal for 2021. Well, that gave me a real kick in, in, the, in the pants, I tell you. I thought, wow, you know, here is a guy who's had to really overcome difficulties, and he's done that. And what he and his father then posted on the website was they developed a technique called the 1% Better Challenge to stay motivated during all this horrendous training. And the idea is just to achieve 1% improvement each day, and that's what they tried to do. That's all it takes. So I wanted to open the floor at that point and, and would love your thoughts, your ideas, questions you might ask yourself to help identify actions, thoughts on the 10 things we could do or change in order to make 2021 a personal success. Can you improve by 1% a day? Do you think you can do that? And um, that's what I'm asking myself. It, it seems really doable. It's not big, it's, it's right there. And I think I can do that every day. If I look at 100%, I'm going to start panicking. So I'd love to hear from you all at this point. And um, let's go for it in 2021. Now, hands, uh, I can't see any hands at the moment. Um, here we go. Mark, you have the floor. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it out, Adrian. Uh, thanks. I'll just kick things off. Um, what hit me this morning from some of your comments, so I've got my nine-year-old granddaughter here along with my son. He's, um, he's helping Sonia at the dental office and we get some things to do on her property here. And it's just great to have him here. And it's, um, it's a good time to, it, it's, I guess what it's doing for me is, I don't want to say it's changing my perspective. Uh, obviously we, all of us who have kids or grandkids, we, you know, we, we, we love them. Um, we like being around them. We, we do anything for them. But uh, when they're not around every single day, you know, you kind of go on in life. And, and then when they're there, uh, some things, even on the procedural or, you know, the typical things that go on during the day, you, you have to kind of reprioritize some things because you need to help them. And uh, especially when they're young like this. And just with what you were saying, I think, so what am I, what kind of things do I, um, do I want to make sure that my granddaughter uh, has availability for or can think of or the things that I didn't do at that age or when available? Now, she's not, she's not, you know, not to junior high and high school yet. So there are some things yet to happen, obviously. But what things can be done at that age? What things can we do where we have the, uh, and I won't say we have ultimate power necessarily, that we have our limitations within society as well, but what things can we do to help them along? What would I do that was different, you know, for her uh, that, that I did? That's really hard question because I think back to my age then and, and it's, I can remember some things, but um, maybe these are too complex and maybe they're, this is too, uh, this is too early to um, to start pursuing these things, but maybe it's at least time to start thinking about them. What kind of things would I teach them? You know, the the concept of burning bridges per se. Um, what's really important in life? What kind of skill sets uh, would I want her to understand, both from the, the you know from a educational intellectual standpoint and from a practical application standpoint? What goals? How you know is it? maybe now is a good time to really start understanding what does it mean to put a milestone or a goal together and attain that? Or if you don't attain that, you know, what kind of feelings do you have? We, we still deal with that to this day, even at this age or at this level of our own personal complexities, when we don't attain a certain goal and we, um, how do we feel? 
uh, was it Glenn was talking about this months ago, where, you know, are you, I, I feel like a failure as opposed to having maybe failed one particular issue. So do we find a way to maybe eliminate that feeling of failure and look to say, look, you just entertain this time. It doesn't mean you stop. It doesn't mean you can't keep pursuing it. Maybe you move the goal or the milestone down to the right a little bit. Maybe that is the critical skill to learn or understand is just how you make modifications to the things that you're doing every day to get to that point where it's, it's a coping mechanism. It's, it's a better coping mechanism. Maybe that's the other thing is what kind of coping mechanisms do they have availability uh, to or access to that maybe they're not doing now. And now with all this virtual learning, that's what I was doing. This is what I'm doing every morning when Josh goes off with so Sonia. Uh, I'm sitting here and, uh, you know, I'm doing the breakfast and, and I'm getting her set up and making sure her virtual class is up and running. And so I have to handle some of the responsibilities. And she's pretty good at that. But I just I'm kind of looking over the shoulder and not trying to be in her knickers because I want her to feel like she's having those you know, she's making those decisions and doing them for herself. So she builds that level of confidence, you know, and, and that she can do this for herself and doesn't need grandpa or daddy here to, you know, to be on her, you know, 24, seven, 365, that kind of thing. So I don't know, this is, I know this isn't really about me necessarily, but as a group, I, I would love to hear if other people are in the same boat and I, I would love some feedback on that because I don't get these kind of chances every day to spend this much time with my granddaughter and I hope I'm pursuing things right. Even at this age, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, questioning my own self about this kind of stuff. So, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I pursuing the right way? Am I giving her every option she has available or am I smothering her and uh, actually stifling her? So, um, th so this is good for me. This is great learning for me too. Thank you. That's great, Mark. I mean, it brings back to mind the childlike discussion we had the other day as well in terms of trying to remain optimistic and think like a child and inspire ourselves not to see any limits. Uh, because this, to me, is all about making real decisions for getting ahead 2021 and onwards. So we, we've got to actually do something. Just believe the impossible. Put, put the positive hat on and write everything down that's possible. Put the green hat on and say, hey, what are new ideas and what's the creative side of this debate? Because the danger is we look again at the same debate and we just keep getting boxed in by preconditioned beliefs. So, you know, great, Mark. I mean, look, looking at a, a granddaughter, a young person saying, hey, you know, if I'd uh, look from that viewpoint or if I knew what I know now, look what I could have done. Look what I can still do because there's still time. But we have to change our thinking sometimes. We, we just get uh, on a negative run or boxed in without even realizing what's happened to us. So, so th thanks very much, Mark. And, Adrian Jay, great to see you. Um, evening, af evening, afternoon, everybody. Great to see you all again. I loved your topic today, Adrian. Really enjoyed it. Um, what takes me back is 12 months ago, would I thought I would have been in this situation? No. COVID came. I started a new job last December. COVID came along. My job was at risk. I had, me, I had my own future in my hands. So I thought, what can I do? What will help me have a better future for me and my children? So I came across this blue sky and it was amazing. And I came across this group and it's amazing. I go into my 50th, I go into my 50th, 50th year in six weeks. And I would never have thought I would have got this far. I've only been doing this now for just over five months, and I got a big milestone today. I've hit £10,000 of sales. Would I have thought this last year? Not a chance. It's just, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next week. Your, your, your future is in your hands. You need to adapt to changes. If you're not going to adapt to changes, you might just lie down and let time pass you by. You only live in this life once and you want to take it with your whole, both hands. And I'm just so happy I've met this group and different people talk on this every day. I can't make every day, but I try to make every day. And this group, would I would not have got to where I am now without this group. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Blue Sky was um, a milestone. 
But this is even more. We adapt every day. We change every day. We hit troubles every day. It's a case of looking beyond that. And where do you want to be? In, as you say, where do you want to be in five years? Well, I want to be in a better position than I am now. And I've set myself a five-year goal. Last year, I would not have thought of this. I wouldn't have thought of me having £10,000 sales, nearly £1,000 in eBay in less than two weeks. It's just a minute. It's just when you put your mind to things, you can achieve anything. As I say, we see regular faces on here. Just go for your dream. You will hit. You will hit obstacles. Just go straight through them. And I just want to thank you all again, like I always do, and just continue with what we're doing. And that's it. Uh, it's always inspiring to hear you, Adrian. You're really always going for it with so much energy. And, you know, presumably you must have had to take uh, decisions. You couldn't have sat there and just did it. You, you, you went for it. You took decisive action. Was that difficult? Did you have a particular way of doing well, it? Or what would the you thing say what ha- well, the thing what happened was I started my me, me new job last year. Me, I can honestly say, me dream job, right? And I thought, yeah, this is where I want to go. I'm going to do a lot with this. In At the end of March, COVID came along. I was furloughed. And I thought, great, furlough, no work. I'm going to lose a job of my dreams. What am I going to do? So I looked around and I came across the blue sky. And I thought, well, I don't want another company being in charge of my future. I want to be in charge of that, not them. And that's what inspired me to go along this journey. I never have looked back. As you say, I only do. I do a bit more than 1% a day, but I probably do 5% to 10% more on my, my business every day. Some days you don't need to do as much. Other days you do a bit more. But as long as you do that little bit every day, you will get there. You will get there. You will, don't, don't think that uh, the obstacle is going to stop you. As you said, that tw- I've just looked at that 21-year-old Down syndrome guy. Look at that guy. He's done an Ironman. I would never have thought doing that. And you've got this guy with his condition, and he goes into it. What does that mean? When you put your mind to things, you can do anything. And this is my anything. This is my anything to get where I want to go. And I will get there. And the whole of us will get there. Love listening to you, Adrian. Just listen to the energy pouring out of the screen because that's the way to do it. You, you didn't get put off by trying to do it perfectly, following every item in the course. You just did it your way. And I think that's a lesson for everybody. Taking action, getting out there and making sales rather than waiting for the whole thing to fall into place. Uh, that's just great, Adrian. That really, perfect really day. That. That perfect day where if you want to wait for the perfect time, that will never happen. You will need to take risks. You will need to gamble. Yes, you may fail. But as I think of it, it's temporary defeat. You will get victory in the end. You will. But you need to look at the next day, the next minute, the next hour, the next month. Where do you want to be? Well, where do you want to be? Well, I want to be here. I don't want to be where I am now. I want to be in a better position for me, my family, and my grandchildren. And that's because I came back. I came from a poor background. I had nobody to help me. I've done this all of my own back. And I'm proud with what I've done. I can't be any prouder. My children are proud with what I've done. They don't look like sometimes, but they look up to me and they think, well, look, he's running a full-time business. He's got two side business going. If he can do it, I can do it. And you need to remind them every day, look, if you want to make, if you want to make your way in life, this is what you need to do. Once you get there, it's easy. But getting to that position is a hard bit. This journey is never going to be easy. It's always going to be difficult sometimes nearly impossible, but you need to push beyond that. And if you push beyond that, you can achieve anything. That's great, Adrian. Thank you so much for sharing all that today. That really is what I think we all need to hear because it is uh, it is a great inspiration. Thank you so much. And Julia, you have, you have the floor. Um, hi, I see we have a little granddaughter in the picture that everybody's saying hi to, um, Mark's granddaughter, Amelia. She's <laughs> yes, hi there. <laughs> How exciting. 
There she is. <laughs> what a lucky young lady and a lucky grandpa. Absolutely. Um, so my comment uh, is how much I have changed uh, through, through this group and through consistently trying to be on the calls. I can't always, but as much as possible. Um, I am making great strides with my health and with, um, I think, slowly with my business, but definitely with my health. Um, I've never been too fond of uh, daily exercise, um, but I got a little scare with a, a high cholesterol count, and I have been diligent, and I intend to <laughs> beat that little monster down. Um, and the 1% improvement each day is so smart and that that just really inspires me this morning because i was i was thinking now you know how much do i want to increase every day am i going to get discouraged because it, it, it's not my favorite thing to do i know john loves to exercise i like to walk i like to do things like that but i don't love being on the bike and the inside bike and you know high intensity interval training is not the easiest thing for me but I'm, I'm proud of myself for doing it, and I'm going to work on that little bit of improvement every day. Um, one of the things I also, that came to mind as Adrian, as, um, Adrian G, as you were talking is, um, I've started doing a schedule each day, and one of those things that I'm scheduling in is pleasure. I mean, it, it's actually for the week. I'm going to take some time on Fridays to indulge myself, in being creative with quilting or painting or something. And I'm going to make that a priority so that I don't again get discouraged and, and just feel like all I ever do is work because that's what I've been feeling for 30 years is all I ever do is work. Then all I ever do is sit at my computer. So anyway, I'm, um, I'm feeling very energized and very excited and I really appreciate the talk today, Adrian and all the other talks we've been having all along. So thank you. Well, thanks for sharing with us, Julia. And yeah, that, you know, that creative time, not only does it reset our clock and make us feel better um, in, in, in a health sense, but it creates ideas as well. Um, this creative thinking we've been talking about in, in the latest chapter of the Think and Grow Rich book, creative thinking is a key part of getting new ideas, looking from another perspective. So thanks, Julia. I'm glad you're doing that. Glad you're taking care of yourself. Thanks. So we have Koila, you have the floor. Lovely to see you. Hi, lovely to see you all too. And well done, Julia. Well done, Adrian and all you lovely folks. And I've got just a, about three different things to say today, maybe. Um, the first thing is comfort zones. Yeah, comfort zones aren't good. And um, I think the thing is, most of us have had challenges in our lives and we've, we're going to have more challenges in our lives. And this is the only way that you actually ever grow and evolve is with those challenges. If, if, if life was all wonderful and, you know, we were all lying on a beach, we'd be bored stiff and um, we'd, we'd never develop any, anywhere. So, you know, you, you just have to just you just have to embrace life and all those challenges that come your way and overcome them that's the only that's the only thing really you can do what's the other choice really is giving up and that's not really a choice i don't think that's a choice at all the best way is to face them and get on with it really um the next thing to say is just a little saying that uh, was brought to mind by uh, something um i think it was you said adrian um and that is it's a small Zen saying, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the experts, there are few. So it's always as well to try and look at things with, with fresh eyes, with, instead of being a kind of jaundiced and, and thinking that you already know that this won't work or that won't work or whatever. And then I'm sure Stuart will remember this little thing I'm just about to to say in a very, very shortened version. And it's the story of the blind men and the elephant. Now I try very hard to, to try and see things from lots of different perspective and that's what this is about. So in a village in India, there were six blind men and they were very wise blind men. And uh, one day there was an elephant in the village 
and they'd not come across an elephant before and they thought they'd go along and see it. So they all had a feel of the elephant to see what it was like and each one had a view of what the elephant was like and they all discussed what they thought the elephant was like and one thought it was like a pillar and another thought it was like a rope and the next one thought it was like a pipe and it was all because they'd all just felt one part of the elephant and didn't have the whole picture. So a wise man came along while these six blind men were all arguing about what this elephant was like and he said well actually you know you're all right but you just haven't seen the whole elephant because each of you only had only felt a part so the elephant's like all of those things but its total is far more so yeah looking at things from all perspectives and trying to see a bigger view is definitely what we all need to do in all walks of life and in business. Thanks, that's all. Love that, Carilla, thank you so much. I love that story as well. It's a great way of looking at it. And you know, it's, it's the author as well, talking about the four sides of a house, different parts of the elephant. And let's face it, we probably all do this quite often. We just look at the problem we can see in front of us rather than going round it. And that's what he's encouraging us and challenging us to do, to get to a better decision. Um, so that, that's a lovely story, I really, I really will remember that one. Thank you very much. Cyril has his hand up. Cyril, you have the floor. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. Um, uh, this, is, this is one of my old favorite topics, actually, because um, I got into, I got into uh, this stuff, Edward de Bono and Tony Bazan in my 20s, and, uh, I, uh, and I've used, that, used him a lot to try and get myself out of uh, mental um stumbling blocks when i couldn't didn't know what direction to go in i found him very useful um found them both very useful um tony bazand with with mind mapping and uh the originator of mind mapping and then also um edward de bono with the master thinkers handbook is amazing i've had it for years drawn it for years uh, and it basically draws on the same idea of looking at different things from different perspectives uh, as well as the lateral thinkers uh, book by Edward Herbono. Um, I found them just of great value, um, particularly if I'm really stuck and I can't, it just enables me to, to take good stock of what's behind me, what's in front of me, what do I have, what don't I have, what do I need, um, where do I want to go to. Um, I just found it really useful because um, I've often had indecision about the direction and, it, and it's been helpful. I don't know that I've always gone in the right direction, but at least I went with some purpose. <laughs> um, I, I, yes, well, I knew the, and I, I, it enabled me to find, find the, that direction. And that's, I suppose, is, is the least you can ask for is to uh, help you find the direction you want to go in until, you've, uh, until such time as you find it is uh, not the direction you want to go in any longer but um yeah this is a great topic uh, yeah my my favorite books are definitely master thinkers handbook lateral thinking um because it's just great ways to look at look at a topic thank you thank you Dejan. great well done great topic now that's valuable cyril i mean I, i'm i'm a massive fan of the mind maps and tony bazan he's been doing this work for 40 or 50 years from memory. Um, I came across the mind maps when I was very young. The idea is, and we, we might do a session on this one day, but the idea is as part of your decision-making or learning or research process that you can map out a topic in a visual plan with linked lines. So you can see the core topic and then the lines coming off and how the topic breaks down. Because a lot of the information we take in is linear and we don't then regroup it to see where it relates to in the main problem because there could be several sublinks, a piece of data that you've put somewhere that actually links into several other places. So mind maps, if anyone wants to look at them, are absolutely brilliant. I'm a real believer in those. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Cyril. I think it's a good way of backing up a decision-making process. You can map out a whole problem with speech bubbles, symbols, and lines. You can colorfully and visually see the whole thing on one page. Yeah. And then thinking, six thinking hats is a development of that idea with defining the areas to think in to help you define what you need to think about. Absolutely. Yeah, it really works. It really works. Well, yeah, I mean, that, 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 folks, I mean, mentioning this today, the reason is we've actually used it in business, in meetings I've attended where we knew there were difficult people around the table that were entrenched and they were forced 
to come up with all the points they could think of from the other viewpoints. And that changed everything. We actually got decisions, whereas we would not have got a decision and would have been in a confrontation with entrenched views and no solution and probably a compromise that wouldn't have been suitable. So it really, really does work. I've really used it. It came to us from consultants originally who recommended using it in, in these meetings we knew we were going to have to hold and it worked. It really, really worked. So thanks, Cyril. That was great contribution. Uh, Stuart has the floor. Adrian, everybody, good day to you guys. Well done today, buddy. Happy Tuesday, man. Well done. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Team Tuesday. Adrian brings it like always. Well done, buddy. Um, to me, uh, everything you're talking about just makes me think of perspective and decision making, right? And um, for many, many years, you know, as an outfitter, as a guide, you know, critical thinking, critical decision making um, has always been a part of, uh, of my daily life. And, you know, we used to talk about like the 30,000 foot view or the 100,000 foot view or whatever that is, but the, the concept of stepping out of a situation to gain perspective. I had never heard of the six hats theory so th or, or uh, uh, practice or whatever. So thank you for uh, uh, sharing that today. Um, it brings up a lot of stuff for me because I, I find myself saying things all the time. Like there's a part of me that thinks this, there's a part of me that thinks or feels this. I say it all the time. And, and, and while on the one hand, it could be seen as, um, indecision or inner conflict, I think it's important to acknowledge these different aspects of ourselves, right? And I, I feel like on any given day, um, you know, even just the, the metaphor of wearing a hat, right? And, and I, I use that all the time too. All right, I'm going to put this hat on. I'm going to put my e-commerce hat on. Okay, I'm going to put my wilderness guide hat on. I'm going to put my parenting hat on or whatever it is. And that reminds me of what Mark was talking about, right? And this the challenge of, of parenting, right? And how do we remove ourselves from the situation a little bit to be able to gain some perspective on how to encourage our children, our grandchildren, um, you know, to make good decisions and, and uh, you know, hop on a, a good path for their life. And, you know, as someone who has had um, a foot in two worlds, let's say, um, for much of my adult life, I, I feel like that's been a big challenge as a parent is, on the one hand, uh, you know, we want to um, encourage and develop skill sets for, uh, you know, the world as we, uh, uh, as we know it or the world as it was or whatever it is. And, and you know, there are a lot of uh, potential outcomes out there. So at the same time that I encourage my children to get formal education, I also encourage them to learn life skills, right? And, uh, and I think all, you know, that to me is sort of the, the duality or the multiplicity of being a parent. Um, thank you to Cyril for posting the uh, audio book and uh, to Jody uh, for posting the PDF of, of Six Hats. Um, I opened it and immediately what I saw was, um, what did I see? to act as if, right at the top, chapter one, right? To act as if, and of course that brings us back to Dorothea Brandt and As a Man Thinketh and uh, Think and Grow Rich, right? Um, but what, uh, what De Bono says is, if you act as a thinker, then you become a thinker, right? So it's this interesting, you know, we usually think about acting as if as, as an action. And yet here, De Bono is telling us to act as a thinker. It's almost a contradiction, right? But thinking, of course, is, is an action. Um, he also says, uh, I just was cruising through this real quick, and he says, you know, putting on a hat is a deliberate process, right? So this kind of goes back to like metacognition and just thinking about what we're thinking and understanding our, our thought processes and, and just the act of saying, wait, let me think about this from a different perspective, right? And that may be challenging for, for some people. For me, that comes pretty naturally. I imagine that comes pretty naturally for, you, for a lot of you guys as well. Um, and that, you know, I'm faced, uh, especially out on the trail in the wilderness with people, critical decision-making on the fly. And so how do you sort of, you know, take all this information in, separate yourself from the process, 
filter all the information, put it through your, you know, your decision making process and make a decision, right? So there's, there's the, the process of wearing the hats, but the ultimate goal is to make that decision, right? Thanks, man. Way to bring it. Tuesday, baby. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Stuart. No, it really, it really works. It, it does force you to, to go through that process, putting that hat on metaphorically with the color of it and thinking in that color for that time. Again, parallel thinking though, get it all down, every single viewpoint, and then weigh it up at the end. You don't always have to decide which point was right. Sometimes the decision filters out. And what big corporations have said, and they're, they're using this massive global corporations use this book for meeting processes and projects. And they are saying, it's cut decision making down from say 14 months to, to a week. Um, so you can really get a decision yourself on perhaps things that have puzzled you for a while, you haven't been decisive on. I think we can all be decisive if we, we really focus on this. Um, it's also the pros and cons list and everything else we do, the mind maps that Cyril's mentioned to get that decision out, as Stuart said, you've got to take the decision at the end of the day. Thanks, Stuart. Um, Evelyn, you have your hand up. Yes, I do. Hi, Adrian. Hi. Like you would say, brilliant. I'm learning from my UK friends. So I love this. Um, Edward de Bono, never heard of him. And that just hit me. I'm like, oh my goodness, so many great authors out there, so many more books to read, so much more to learn and keep on growing. Then I heard you talk about the hats the six thinking hats model. The first thing that came to my mind is that in my world of uh, staffing, we always say you got to wear a different hat depending on who you're talking to. And that is just, you know, if you're talking to a warehouse guy that you're hiring, you wear that hat. You try to uh, not only have the empathy, but to understand them where they're coming from and their their social status and their aspirations and what they're looking for. And if you're going to go and sit down with the CEO of a large company, you also have to learn how to wear that hat. And basically it is a mirror, right? You're just trying to um, understand where the client is coming from and thinking about empathy, thinking about how you want to be of service, etc. But then I started reading. Thank you, Jody, for the the little short um, three pages here. So I, I have, you know, obviously highlighted the white hat, you know, the thinking hat, you know, that's the one that we're going to focus on um, the available data that we have in order to make a decision. And I realized something, I do a lot of it out of the red hat position. I'm very intuitive and it has never failed me. You know, that doesn't mean that I ignore every single hat, I do. But I've also noticed that I am very fast at making a decision and I rely 99% of the time on my intuition. And that's how I make decisions. I, I do see all the data, I see the entire picture, but I don't know why every time I question my intuition, I fail. So I have learned lately um, I will say it's been mostly 2020 that I said, heck with this, I'm going with my intuition. It's time that I learned to accept that, that my gut feeling is, is strong, you know, and that I need to listen to that. Um, I was on the session yesterday with um, Stuart and I, I love him to death. I see how he spends so much time analyzing data. Thank you, Stuart, for doing that, because there's no way that I can do that. I will read it, I will scan through it, but I will go back to my intuition on what I need to do. And I, that just, I don't know how to explain it. It goes to show you how each and every single one of us have a strength in a different area, right? Um, I remember when I started to work in corporate America, my first job was in Portland, Oregon, where they did this test about the colors, right? The strength, what you are, you know, the colors will determine your personality and how they can match you with either accounts or clients or 
the, the manager, the CEO knows how to best help you where you will be developed better because of your personality and that he was huge on that. And after that, the larger the company that I went to, they kept on doing this to analyze the personalities. I don't know if that has anything to do with the six hat thinking, but it is curious to me to see how this, we go developing that. Sometimes though, we overthink, we overanalyze and we deny our intuition. I've noticed that, and I've noticed that in this group too. And I have learned uh, through my 58 years of life that our intuition, our gut feeling is our angels always watching out for us, that are telling us the route we need to take. That doesn't mean that I am putting zero value on being smart and al analyze the data. But sometimes we overdo it we become the little hamster on the wheel, analyzing too much and we do not take action. And I don't know why I keep on hearing John Lavinia telling me it's better in perfect and done than perfect and not done, you know? And I, I definitely wanna see all of us, you know, moving forward, getting to where we're going and have even bigger goals for 2021. We gotta leave 2020 behind. We learned a lot. It hurt a lot to other people. But I think we gained, this group, we have gained a lot more than most people. And that's also coming from John, you know, that he has taught us how to be together, how to stick together, how to work towards our goals, you know, and to move, you know. We got to put some action and traction in all of this. So I'm sorry if I was all over the place, you guys, but this was excellent, Adrian. Thank you so much for bringing it up. No, thank you, Evelyn. That wonderful thoughts. And I agree, gut feeling is important. Intuition is important. I think this is just saying for people struggling to make a decision or if we recognize we're not making them, which we have to do to trigger action, then there are processes whereby you can force yourself off your, your reserve position that you always take and, and challenge yourself to think again but you've still got to take that decision and the gut is an important part of that. It's come out and think and grow rich. Um, it's part of the unexplained subconscious operation of our brain as well. And it is, it is important. I agree with you, Evan. I absolutely agree with that. Thanks for that. Those thoughts. And Cyril, you have your hand up. Hi. Um, I just wanted hey. to add something to, um, hi, um, what Evelyn was talking about. I've been reading a lot of Chris Voss on negotiation skills, which has been really interesting, really interesting. And, um, and really opened me up uh, to a new areas in negotiation. But one of the things uh, that, that he says in the book, in one of his books is that um, uh, the research shows that when people have damage in emotional areas of the brain, they tend not to be able to make a decision. So it seems that we need the emotional sides of our brains to actually make a decision. Um, so, uh, and that without it, we tend to get stuck anyway. So, um, as an, so it, um, it's an interesting, it's an interesting parallel actually with what Evelyn was saying, because we do need the emotions to actually make the decision. And if you try and avoid the emotion, actually completely, you're, uh, you're avoiding what you need to do to, in some way as well. Now that's interesting, sir. I'll definitely look up more on that and he, he's i think he's a former fbi negotiator from memory and he's training people how to negotiate which is another topic that's come up yeah it's, i must admit I I, yeah. I I really love his book it's uh, really interesting um because yeah. basically the fbi look at the uh how the brain functions in negotiations and he comes from the point of view of having to extreme to deal with extreme points of view in terms of psychopaths and things and how actually it still relates to business negotiation as well because uh people actually in reality, people are very emotional in the way they negotiate anyway, even when it's not in their interest necessarily. So, um, yes, very interesting. No, that's great, Cyril. And I'm, I'm encouraging John to, to mount a negotiating session because I think that's an important part of the sales process, which not for today, but for another session, we'll hopefully get onto. We're nearly at the top of the hour. So thanks for that, Cyril. We're nearly at the top of the hour. I'm not sure if John's still on the call or wanted to say anything at this point. Otherwise, we will wrap it up. Can't see you there, John, if you're there. Um, 
I will wrap it up if there are no more comments at this point, but I've really um, loved hearing from you. And I, I just think we can all do this. John really believes we can all do this and he wants to see it. He really genuinely wants big wins for 2021 for everybody. Everyone can do this, but we just have to get our tires on the road and do something. Uh, and this is all part of the process. So really looking forward to seeing what you're going to get up to. I've been amazed, not amazed, but really just, you know, very admiring of everything that's been done so far by the group. Fantastic progress. Great things have been launched. And this is just the beginning. So, you know, I just, anyone that's um, feeling a bit left behind, just contact members of the group. There's a lot of people prepared to talk who have ideas or can share what they've done, like Adrian J, how he did it, what they've done. So reach out, you know, don't get left behind. There's no reason to be left behind or feel isolated. This is what the mastermind is for. When you're feeling a bit stuck, it's a driving force. It pulls us all along, pulls us out of the mud. So uh, let's pull ourselves out of the mud and grow some lotus flowers, as Coila would tell us. Um, great to see you all. I'm going to wrap it up with that and say goodbye until tomorrow. Housekeeping wise, 5 p.m. Eastern Time USA. It's Corporate Curios with Ibie, which is always a brilliant session. And 8 p.m. is Stuart Adventures Eastern Time, Adventures in Mindset with Stuart. So two brilliant sessions for later on in the day or the evening, depending where you are. So be there if you can. Thank you very much for joining today and really appreciate you being here. Take care, everybody. Bye for now. Goodbye.